Here we have Wave 4 for the Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures game. In this video I will perform a detailed review of all four ships, letting you see in close-up detail each of the ships, as well as all of the new cards, rules, and to see how the new technology these bring will change your gameplay. OK, let's start with all the ship figures. And on the left we've got here the Z95 Headhunter. What I'm going to do is zoom right in. Let the camera focus and then I can uh, show and talk about the uh, the figure. As you can see, it's got a blue stripe down the nose, very X-Wing like. It's got a curved cockpit, so it's quite a little bit different to the X-Wing, but as you can see, face on, it looks like an X-Wing without its foils deployed. And underneath there, you can see sort of torpedoes or missiles, but otherwise, it's a very, very similar and close interpretation of the X-Wing. You can certainly see that this could well develop into an X-Wing. You've got slightly smaller engine ports. I'm not sure I'm going to uh, find it quite as easy to paint. I'm just bringing an X-Wing to its side, just so you can see. I'm going to start with the same kind of orientation, so you can see I've popped some orangey-yellow colour in there just to give uh, some life to those engines. It's very slightly smaller, as you can see. The engines and overall the main part of the rear body, but the actual nose cone is very similar. Obviously the original X-Wing has a more, let's say, straight-edged or uh, squarer look to it. But it's uh, all in all very, very nice. I really like this. I think this is my favourite ship uh, in terms of design. And you can certainly see where the uh, X-Wing comes from. Now let's get into the E-Wing. Now the E-Wing is a, an altogether very different ship. So head-on, you can see where it comes from the E-Wing. So let's look at it like the letter would be. Um, and it's uh, got curved wings, a little bit Battlestar Galactica. Not keen on the gun on top of the cockpit area. So how that cockpit opens and the pilot gets in and out, I don't know. And they've also hidden the fact there's an astromech, astromech droid in there. So uh, I guess there's quite a bit to the the rear of the ship, which is uh, which is fair enough. And they've um, loaded the engines on the tips of the wing, right beside the guns. And I mean right beside the guns, they're they're pretty much touching. Nice red coloration. Echoes of X-Wing front, it's a stumpier nose, but all in all, it's an okay ship. Just uh, doesn't quite reek Star Wars to me in the same way some of the others do. And that top gun, you gotta be careful, it's a bit fragile, it's just because it's invisible. I mean, quite a few of these uh, these figures are fragile, especially the uh, X-Wing, for example, it's long, pr pronding, pointing out weapons, but uh, this one's just a little bit hidden, so you gotta be careful of that. Okay, so let's look at the TIE Defender. The TIE Defender is a monster of a ship, and I mean monster. Beautiful looking though it is. Let's just bring in a normal TIE Interceptor, and you can see that there's an absolute echo. So I put this almost side by side. There's an echo in regarding the actual uh, the fins there. So you've got obviously three pairs, as opposed to two pairs that the TIE Interceptor has, but otherwise very much similar size and scale, almost identical, different colorations, blue-gray rather than gray-gray, but uh, they've really kept the, the, the style and the pattern really nice. The actual body the pilot sits in, a little bit more like the uh, the normal TIE Interceptor, but all the linkages on the rear rather than coming from the side, really nice large ship, and this is the one that's going to be a spin on the spot, so really nice. A little bit last starfighter, the way it can just kind of turn around on the spot with uh, with no stress for pilot. And last but not least, the TIE Phantom. So this has got itself really uh, a lot of reputation. A lot of people are looking forward to the ship. I think it looks gorgeous. It's a different cockpit. It's the first time I've seen a cockpit where it's slightly pointed and tapers in. Now there's uh, a lot of uh, machinery on the back there, but I guess that's all for the cloak. So it's a, it's a special ship that can cloak. It's got a lot of uh, damage firepower. Beautiful looking ship, very simple again. Bluey grey, so it's a much more similar coloration to the TIE Defender. Lovely ship, and uh, I'm going to enjoy seeing this sweeping around. Very simple paint job, nothing special going on here, but I actually like them for that, so um, I do like the Imperial ships. I don't really uh, change these at all. I like the uh, simple orange dots on the guns, and as you can see, I'm just trying to let you zoom in. I might go in a little bit closer just so you can see, but they're actually on slight stalks. Um, normally it's just a, a dot underneath. So I'm going to quickly bring back the TIE Defender, so it's normally just a dot underneath the actual canopy, but the uh, Phantom has them on stalks, so there we go. So there are the uh, the new ships, let's just pull out again, and I'm going to just pop the uh, 
their closest neighbours to them. So there's a time scepter and there's an X-Wing. Um, in the Z95 Headhunter box you get four ship cards and five upgrade cards. As you can see all the ships are two attack, two agility, two hull and two shields. So that's rather nice. You don't lose the hull and shield but it's not overkill. So you're not going to beat the uh, mainstay X-Wing. But look at the price. 12, 13, 17, 19. Really low point score. So you're going to get quite a few of these Z95 Headhunters if you want to make a swarm. It's certainly doable. Okay, so as you can see from the action bars, quite simple. You've got focus and target lock, and only the named pilots have got the medal upgrade, but all the ships have the ability to carry missiles, and absolutely two of those five upgrade cars are missiles. We'll go to those later. Let's look at Erin Kraken. So, eight point pilot skills. After you perform an attack, you may choose another friendly ship at range one. That ship may perform one free action. So, great if you like to help out your buddies. If you're flying in close formation, range one, that is close, then that's a great card to, to lead a small swarm. But actually, my favourite's Lieutenant Blount or Blunt, depending how you want to pronounce that OU. And he has an when attacking the defender's hit by your attack, even if he does not suffer, suffer any damage. So that's one of those classic cards where if you've got an effect from another card or another ruling going on where you need to actually do a hit and then the rule, the other card rule, etc. It takes effect, then that's perfect for you because it doesn't matter if he serves any damage, suffers any damage or not. So it's a bit of a strategic card, but I like him. 17 points, six pilot skills, quite a nice card. The basic cards are also fantastic. Look at this guy. Bandit Squadron Pilot, only two pilot skills, only 12 points, plenty of money to spend on that missile. And Tala, four point pilot skills, only one more point, 13. And again, if you've got the odd spare point, certainly I'd go from a two pilot to a four pilot any day. Certainly nice to have a, a middle movement card for both moving and shooting when you're in play. Okay, let's go through these cards. So as I explained, all these, car all these guys, all these cards can carry missiles. And here's the new card. You've got an ion pulse missile and that literally shoots does iron damage so and it gives you both one damage and two ion tokens so that's going to do some damage it's not really a damage card but it gives you ion tokens which allows you to stall and impact other ships larger ships so two ion tokens can affect a large ship in play so if you've got a bit of a strategy going on with the larger ships it could be quite nice salt missiles surprise surprise you know you're gonna you're gonna be using these a 12 point ship with a five point missile and you're going to love this kind of modification card on the card with a munitions fail safe. So look at this one point amazing card. It's a modification to the ship. So when attacking with a secondary weapon, those missiles to the right there, that instructs you to discard it to perform the attack. Do not discard it unless the, the attack hits. So yeah, basically you're going to get an actual hit before you throw away your missiles. So that's really rather nice. So you got the target lock, you got the missiles, and you got the munitions fail safe. 12, 13, another five points. So for only 18 points, you got yourself a guaranteed card hitting missile ship that you can then fly around and bug those TIE fighter interceptors, etc., until you get destroyed. Uh, using your two hull and shields as best you can with a two point pilot. But what a good damage points you're going to do before you go. Okay, let's look at those medals. So again, quite supporting cards. You've got Wingman, which makes sense if you've got, let's say, three in a group. Again, it's only range one, but at the start of the combat phase, remove one stress token from another friendly ship at range one. So that keeps your guys going if they're getting stressed out. Decoy, it's really a card that you're going to play only really if you've got, um, let's say, one or two of these uh, named metal guys going on. So you've got to have, let's say, a squadron with some decent pilot skills going on, as well as a whole bunch of basic squadron pilots. So at the start of the combat phase, you may choose one friendly ship at range one to two. So quite a reasonable range. You don't need to have too tight a grouping on this one. And you may exchange your pilot skills or that ship's pilot skills into the end of the phase. So the way I see this being used, very simplistically, if you've got a bunch of ships together, guy in the middle's got himself the decoy, got himself some nice pilot skills. Let's say this eight Eren Kraken over here. 
and he wants to let one of these other guys move and use his skills first because he got slightly better position. So this guy here might have a slightly different facing, different orientation, just enough to get in front of or block a card. So it's quite a nice little card to play if you've got a group of fighters that you're gonna you plan to, to fly in reasonably close formation and wingman obviously range one, decoy one to two, but you can see that working in a in a nice little tight group setup there. Also in the E-Wing pack you get four ship cards and five upgrade cards. Let's look at these ships. So they're not cheap, 35 points, 32, 29, 27, but you get three attack, three agility, two hull and three shields. So for me, that's uh, that's a really, really good card. So if I add the shields and hull together, that's five points, exactly the same as an X-Wing. And you've still got the three attack, but these guys get an extra point of agility. So three agility, is the agility worth the money? Um, you've actually got some interesting maneuvers here. It's quite a nippy card. It can go five and four straight line. And uh, okay, you've got the barrel roll option on the four. So let's just quickly go through those actions. So you've got as an action bar, focus, target lock, barrel roll, and evade. So not bad in a dogfight, even though you, you, you kind of think about these and think these are heavy gunships, but uh, actually they're, they're not bad compared to the uh, basic X-Wing. Astromech droids as well. So uh, only the name pilots getting the medals, but you've got torpedoes and all kinds of other sensor etc. So not bad cards. Let's look at the name pilots. So pilot skill of eight, Corrin Horn. At the start of the end phase, you may perform one attack. You cannot attack during the next round. Yep, two attacks around. Next round you then miss an attack, but that two attack round, that's quite awesome. So you could be launching your torpedoes, you could be doing double shots, real lot of damage. And if you know you're going to be out of the way next turn or you're doing a swooping flyover and you're going to be miles away, toodling at five with a target lock, rather nice. A couple of the um, cards that you get here give you some nice, really easy upgrade ideas as well with those upgrade cards. We'll go to those later. Let's look at Ethan Abat. And this is a little bit more complicated and it only affects one dice, but let's just go through this. So when an enemy ship inside your firing arc at range one to three is defending, the attacker may change one of its hits to a critical. So it's only one die. You can obviously do it on anyone. It doesn't have to be something you're shooting. So this guy's nice support role could be, you know, in league with Corrin on this one, uh, making sure Corrin's hits do uh, even more damage, but you've got to line yourself up. Bit fussy, 32 points, only a five pilot skill. No, not so sure I'll go for Ethan. Corrin Horn, nice card. Let's look at the basic guys. 29 points, 27 respectively. One point, I never like seeing a one point pilot on such an expensive ship, but there we go. Three point Black Moon Squadron pilot. 29, nice simple card here. And okay, so the Nave Squadron pilot, he is called Nave. One point there, one point, 27 points. Not sure you could, worth spending an upgrade on him. Um, maybe you could see this uh, when you're really, really tight in points, because obviously the range between 35 and 27, you've got there a good, you know, eight points, but it's, it's, that's one point, one point pilot. Okay, so let's go through the special cards. You've got two astromech droids, they're new, so say hello to the R7s, and they're quite, quite good. So the R7 astromech, the basic one, two point, once per round when defending, if you have a target lock on the attacker, so do use your target locks, you may spend that target lock to choose any or all attack dice. The attacker must re-roll the chosen dice. So that's good as long as you are getting hit by the guy you've got a target lock on. So he will save your ship. Um, I was going to say something else there, but it will save your ship because any criticals, any hits, you can say re-roll those please. And uh, that's going to, could potentially save you worth it for two points. So R7T1, interesting one again, quite powerful. Choose an enemy ship at range one to two, good range. If you're inside that ship's firing arc, so in some way this R guy, this R7 guy is you know, able to go back on the, the firing arc of your ship, of the ship attacking you, sorry. Uh, you may then acquire a target lock on that ship, then you may perform a free boost action. So it gets you a free boost, gives you a target lock, Quite interesting. Obviously, wouldn't it be nice to have two asteroid droids? They almost sound like they want to be in the same ship, they're buddies. So let's look at the pilot metal upgrade here. So outmaneuver, this is really nice. So when attacking a ship inside your firing arc, if you are not inside that ship's firing arc, reduce its ability value by one. So this is really gonna help when you're following along from, you know, let's say you want this guy doing all the damage. This guy is trying to, this, let's say on another another lower skilled pilot, doesn't have to be one of these E-wings, of course. You're gonna 
chase down on those tie interceptors, knock off on his agility, and you're going to get yourself some really quite nice um, help your buddies hit the target that you're after. And then we've got two cards that are already out there, Advanced Sensors and Fleshet Torpedoes. Not sure these torpedoes are the right ones for these E-Wings, but uh, that's all quite interesting. You imagine if these guys got a boost action, so a lot of uh, action bar items already going on there. Uh, they're very manoeuvrable and, uh, to be honest, uh, interesting uh, card to weigh up against an X-Wing now. Makes you want to think how you want to spend your money. Uh, again, whether you want to stick with cannon or not. Corrin Horn, nice pilot. I could see me flying one of these quite happily with a bunch of X-Wings. The TIE Defender also comes with four ship cards and five upgrade cards. And let's look at those ships. 3 attack, 3 agility, 3 hull, 3 shields, rather amazing. Prices ranging from top end 37 down to 30. It's an expensive card, but you get a lot of ship. And uh, before we go through the actual card details, I want to just highlight the movement dial going on here. So he toodles along at 5 green, so uh, this guy is fast and doesn't get stressed doing anything straight. A little, uh, little bit of red doing the, uh, the tight turns on one and two. But uh, your eyes are not wrong. You're seeing there a white U-turn. So this guy can do 180 degrees on the spot. Speed four, no stress, no hassle. So um, this guy is going to be quite, uh, quite nipping at sweeping in and around swarms and uh, going back for another turn and shooting. So let's look at the first one. So 37 points. Pilot score of 8. You can see there the action bar missing the evade. So no evade, but you've got focus target lock and barrel roll. And um, you've got cannon missiles and, of course, medals for the named guys. So Rexler Brath. 8 point, nice. 37 points, expensive, but not crazy. Powerful ship. After you perform an attack that deals at least one damage card to the defender, you may spend a focus token to flip those cards face up. Okay, that's quite nice. You're going to get to do some rather nasty damage there. Colonel Vesery, or Vesere, depending on how you want to pronounce him. When attacking, immediately after you roll an attack dice, you may acquire a target lock on the defender if it already has a target lock token. A little bit fussy to use. Could be useful. Not so sure. Quite like Rexler Brath. To be honest, they're nothing too special. They are expensive. Um, and you're going to need to spend quite a bit more money on them anyway to, to really pimp these guys up. But these are real damage machines, and uh, I think I think they're fine. They've not overdone it. I don't think you'd have uh, wanted overkill pilots on these. And let's look at the basic guys. So you've got the Onyx Squadron Pilot, 3 skill, 32 points. And Delta Squadron Pilot, 1 pilot skill, 30 point ship, 1 pilot skill. Again, I'm not a big fan of ones on such an expensive ship. I think if you've got a junior guy, um, you don't put him in the best ship you've got, the most expensive ship you've got. At the end of the day, it's still a 3-3-3-3. Three, 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 three. So really rather damageful ship. It's going to last. It's going to, you know, <laughs> it's got the kind of power of the TIE Bomber staying ability mixed in with some of the attacking abilities that you only normally see in kind of X-Wings, B-Wings. So this is a rather awesome ship for the, uh, for the evil empire. And I think they're going to use this rather well. Okay, so let's look at the cards. Let's go to the medals first. So you get a special card here that I think you're going to rather like as well. So Predator. Let's go through us. Three points. When attacking, you may re-roll one attack dice. If the defender's pilot skill value is two or lower, you may instead re-roll up to two attack dice. So you imagine one of these guys with Predator on sweeping up any low-skilled, easy pickings pilot. So one of those uh, on the table, and uh, he's uh, going to be quite awesome. Outmaneuver again. Really nice card. Again, munitions fells safe. So again... You don't get to lose your ordnance unless you actually hit. And what do they give you for the missiles? They give you iron pulse missiles, again, which is nice. So again, you got yourself iron weaponry on the Empire. And iron cannon to end. So again, there's the uh, iron focus that you get for these ships. So absolutely, they got the guns. But if you want to, you've now also got yourself a really good way to get uh, iron weaponry on these ships, rather nifty though they are. And I think that's the thing you've got to keep an eye on, that manoeuvre dial. Four-speed white U-turn. 
That's going to be interesting seeing a lot of these guys spinning around the table. Should be fun. With a TIE Phantom, not only do you get the four ship cards and five upgrade cards, but you also get the new rule cards for the cloak action and the decloak. Okay, and I've also popped out here the token, cardstock token from the card, just so you can have a good look at it. Now then, as we can see the ships, four attack, that's rather awesome. Two agility, and that can become four when you're cloaked. We'll go into that in a minute. Two hull, two shield. So really good uh, ship regarding attack. Not the best regarding hull and shields, but costs ranging from 32, 25, 27. Some nice low price ones here. And also the fact that it's a pilot skill of three. We'll come to hear the Sigma Squadron pilot in a bit, but I like that. Let's look at that action bar. So there we go. Focus, barrel roll. Evade, evade on a ship that's already got a cloak, wow. And of course the new cloak action, so it is an action. Decloak isn't, decloak's a rule, so that's quite an important point. Let's quickly look at the manoeuvre dial. Okay, so Poodle's on four speed maximum. It's got some nice green type turn manoeuvring going on there, so it's, uh, it's going to be quite dexterous at the slower speeds. Does do U-turn, 180 degree turns at both three and four. And although you might think, where is this speedy ship that everyone's been talking about, that actually comes as part of the cloak and decloak because you actually get to do another two manoeuvres. So actually this ship can move six with no hassle. And when cloaked, as I said, it has the plus two agility. So it's got a four agility. So potentially it's a four, four, two, two, six movement ship. So it's a rather awesome ship. And that's before we've even gone into the detail and some of the special cards. And some of these uh, upgrade cards are rather incredible. And look at the ships, they've got crew. Yep, this ship, even though I thought all the extra bodywork on the back was just for the cloaking device, has actually got a member of crew in there. So that's uh, quite an unusual and, and, and unexpected, I should say, an unexpected feature of this ship. Okay, Whisper and Echo, I really like the pilot names. Um, really fitting for the cloaked type ships that the Imperials have got here. So let's go through this guy. So Whisper. After you perform an attack that hits, you may assign one focus token to your ship. Nothing too special there. 32 points, 7 point pilot skill. Echo, 6 point pilot. And let's go through this one. 30 points here, but when you decloak, you must use the 2 curve or 2... Uh, two left or two right curve template instead of the straight forward template. Now that really only really makes sense when we go to the cloak action but basically that means is when your ship is on the game table and it's got the cloak token beside it like I've just cunningly placed here to say that you're cloaked no one really knows where that ship is and although you've got this four agility going on so you're harder to ta harder target when you decloak you actually get to do a move of either two forward, a standard, let's say a standard TIE Phantom would do a two forward, left or right move as part of their decloak activity. And what Echo gets to do is he gets to use two left turn or right turn. So he can basically come and come out as decloak over here or over there or facing oh, all kinds of directions. So he's really got some extra fancy moves that he can do as he decloaks, which makes it even harder to determine where he's going to come out, which is what these are all about. These guys, you want to be able to hit them and hit them quick because they're hard to find and hard to target and hard to get your damage done on the ships because they're going to be in and out of the cloak. So let's quickly go through the Shadow Squadron pilot, five pilot skills, 27 points, nice pilot level here for 27 and the Sigma Squadron Pilot 3 on the basic 25, I like that. It's a uh, pilot skill of 3, which I think is really nice. Nice to see some good pilots in these top-end ships, and I don't think 25 is too high a price to pay for something that's got cloak and all that damage ability. Okay, so let's go through the cloak action rule card. This explains how you play, play your new token. So when you want to perform the action cloak, you place your token by the ship, near or on the ship, so on the base, etc., float around the board with you. A ship cannot perform the cloak action whilst it already has a cloak token, so you can't cloak a cloaked ship. Pretty obvious, really. I don't know why they had to put that rule in. The agility value of a ship with a cloak token is increased by two. While that ship has a cloak token, it cannot perform attacks. Okay, it's very specific there. So whilst you're cloaked, you cannot attack. So in a round, you're now cloaked. You put your token out. And that's it. So you also want to time when you do your actions and decide what you're doing regarding your play area. When you decloak, 
this isn't an action. So when you decloak, a ship may spend a cloak token to decloak. So you remove the token, so that's spent. Immediately before revealing the maneuver dial, so you've already decided what you're going to do. And then you must choose one of the following effects. You perform a barrel roll using the two move maneuver template or execute a two straightforward maneuver. So that's what I was explaining before. So when you're coming out of the cloak, you're either going to move forward two and then do the maneuver that you've got on your movement dial or left to or right to. So that's a standard way that the TIE Phantom decloaks. Obviously, if you're Echo, you've got some extra fanciness to that because you've got the curve. Now the only real rule special thing about decloaking is when you're coming out. Now normally if one's used to the not colliding that your base mustn't touch or clip another ship. With a decloak, you've also got to make sure that the actual movement that you put down, whether it be a straight, forward, left, right, or the curve, depending if you're whisper or not, that base nor the actual um, obstacle token, sorry, <laughs> nor the actual movement template may overlap an obstacle token. Okay, so you've got to make sure you do not touch a ship. So you've got a bit of space around you to do a decloak uh, in the direction you want to go. Once you then come out, of course, you then do the normal manoeuvre. So that's the only real restriction on the decloak, that you've got a bit of space where you want to, let's say, materialise on the board. That's clear, so you need a little bit of free space in one of the directions, but you get to choose the direction when you decloak. That's not part of the movement, and then you get to do the move. So I don't think that's going to be too binding or too difficult, unless you're completely surrounded, and if you're surrounded, hey, stay cloaked. Okay, so... Um, I guess with this card, you've got to really uh, plan your attack a little bit more. So it's a complicated card as a pilot to play because you're cloaking and decloaking and it's going to type your action. So obviously you've got to uh, consider what else you're doing, but it's certainly a maneuverable ship. I'm going to take away the rule cards now just so we can go through the special cards. And there are yet further treats in store for this particular ship. Let's just get this all out of the way, so we start with a nice clear area. So straight away, they give you an advanced cloaking device, four points. So if you really want to spend your money on this ship, you can do. Obviously it's a title card only, so it's tight Phantom. After you perform an attack, you may perform a free cloak. So a free cloak, so you can therefore use a different action to do something else, barrel roll, do a focus, whatever, and then cloak after your attack. So that gives you a, a nice perk if you want to be a little bit dynamic and not have to just alternate your rounds between fighting, fleeing, cloaking, coming back again, etc. Two point card. And I'm going to say this wrong. I'm going to butcher the word here. Here we go. It's a Stygium, Stygium, Particle Accelerator. It's a modification to your ship when you either decloak or perform a cloak action, you may perform a free evade action. So you get to do an extra evade. So a lot of these cards are helping you with your action tie-in. Then you've got a fire control system, which after perform an attack, you may perform a target lock on the defender. And I'm going to shuffle these along a little bit because we're going to get the, uh, the two crew members on as well. If I can just slide them in. So we've got a tactician. And the tactician is, of course, after you perform an attack against a ship inside your firing arc at range 2, that ship receives one stress token. So you're dishing out stress and a recon specialist. So when you perform a focus action, assign one additional focus token to your ship. So you've got the ability to give out stress now as well. Um, so there we go. So this is the whole new cloak and decloak ship rule for the TIE Phantom. Adds a complete new aspect to the Imperials. Really interesting new gameplay. Because of the actual mad movement you can do on the board by cloaking and decloaking, it's going to be very difficult to know where these guys are. It's going to be interesting for the rebels to know how to attack all these ships. Do they ignore them until they decloak and attack them? You know, how or do you try to swarm into the area? One thing I really quite like about the cloak and decloak is that you you really, although you can keep this fig on the table so everyone is able to see what's going on, it's an approximation. So it's quite a clever mechanism to actually give a cloaked ship on the board without some sort of strange, you can't see what I'm doing, I'm using my own little battle grid reference underneath the table. And it also makes it a lot more powerful than it could have been. It could have been quite a weak thing, the cloak. It could have just been treated like, you know, an increase to agility or evade. But they, they've done a really nice job here. They've given you this in and out of cloak, increased agility, and a really nice uh, token move that you get as part of the decloak. So I'm glad you can't go any faster than four normally because it would be a crazy amount of distance going on there with the uh, additional two moves part of the decloak. Really interesting ship, and I think that really is the um, most excellent ship as part of Wave 4. Adds a whole new rule set, and uh, it's really going to change the way people play on the table. So um, I wish I bought three of them. I suggest you do too. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to like, subscribe, and comment.